Good evening. I am Dr. Sanjay Dajdukta. I am consultant nephrologist, Calcutta Medical College and Hospital, GD Hospital and SVS Marwari Hospital, Amar Street. Now, today we are uh, going to discuss about edema, CKD, that is chronic kidney disease, and different modes of treatment of edema, that is swelling of legs related to chronic kidney disease. Now, as you all know, we have two kidneys. What are the functions of the kidneys? The functions of the kidneys are excretion of water soluble wastes, maintenance of acid base balance of the body, production of erythropoietin and thus increasing hemoglobin level, maintaining the structure of the bones by maintaining calcium phosphorus balance. Actually, one kidney is sufficient to work properly. If the other kidney is not working, one kidney is sufficient to take over and a person can survive on the function of one kidney only. What are the symptoms of kidney failure? The symptoms of kidney failure are volume overload, that is accumulation of fluid in the body resulting in swelling of legs and shortness of breath. Acidosis, that is accumulation of acids in the body causing various sort of symptoms. Encephalopathy, that is involvement of the brain due to accumulation of toxins resulting in convulsion, psychosis, coma, etc. Anemia, due to loss of production of erythropoietin and weakened bones due to disordered calcium phosphorus balance. Now, kidney dysfunction can be of two types. One is acute kidney injury and one is chronic kidney disease. Acute kidney injury means those that are caused by reversible causes and may get cured if the inciting factors are withdrawn. For example, infection, poisoning, snake bite, diarrhea vomiting, etc. Sometimes required few sessions of dialysis and the patient may get well after few weeks. What is the definition of AKI that is acute kidney injury? Suppose my creatinine is 1 and it becomes 1.3 that is rise of creatinine by 0.3 within 48 hours that is acute kidney injury. If my baseline creatinine rises by 1.5 times of the normal within 7 days that is acute kidney injury. If in an ICU patient who is catheterized, if urine output is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour, that is acute kidney injury. What is chronic kidney disease? Chronic kidney disease means you must remember the duration, 3 months. It is the permanent dysfunction and degeneration of the kidney. Duration you should remember, it is 3 months. So what happens in 3 months? If more than 3 months period, Either the creatinine is raised or the glomerular filtration rate is low. That is interrelated creatinine and glomerular filtration rate. GFR is less than 60. Or even if the creatinine is normal, the kidney has got certain structural and functional anomalies like cysts, excretion of protein in urine, etc. So more than 3 months, either the GFR is low or the creatinine is raised or even if the GFR is normal, the structure and function of the kidney is impaired due to cysts or proteinuria or tumor, etc. So, chronic kidney disease means permanent degeneration and dysfunction of the kidney. So, both in acute and chronic, along with other symptoms like anorexia, nausea, vomiting, encephalopathy, neuropathy, pericardial effusion, we have edema. Today, we are discussing edema. Now, one thing I'm just telling what is nephrotic syndrome when the protein urea is too much, more than 3.5 grams per kg, uh, no, more than 3.5 grams per 24 hours per day. So, that is nephrotic syndrome along with hypercholesterolemia and lipiduria. This causes edema. Now, how to treat edema? Edema means pedal swelling. So, first I am telling you what is the mechanism of edema. It chronic kidney disease. One is underfill hypothesis, another is overfill hypothesis. Underfill hypothesis means, suppose the albumin is going out through urine. Albumin 
retains the oncotic pressure of the blood vessel. That is, it retains fluid. Now, if the albumin goes out, the oncotic pressure becomes less. So, the body cannot retain fluid. So, the fluid accumulates outside the blood vessels in the legs. Uh, and when the fluid accumulates outside and the fluid inside the blood vessel becomes less, the kidney tries to retain more water and salt by a system called renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So, it retains more fluid. So, one cause of edema is loss of albumin in urine that results in kidney trying to compensate it by accumulating more salt and water. Another cause is total dysfunction of the kidney and resulting not being able to excrete the fluid. So these are the two causes, underfill and overfill and both of these are overlapped and in combination they cause edema. So how to treat edema? Number one, fluid restriction. Number two, salt restriction. We should take less than 5 grams of salt per day, that is about 2.4 grams of sodium. Number three is a class of drugs called diuretics. What are diuretics? Diuretics are drugs that excrete salt and water. These are life-saving drugs but not without side effects. What are the types of diuretics? There are several types of diuretics. The most popular diuretics are thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics. Uh, thiazide diuretics are used mostly in normal hypertensive patients who are not having kidney problem or heart failure or cirrhosis or nephrotic syndrome. There are crores of people in the world who are hypertensive. So in those cases, we use thiazide diuretic like hydrochlorothiazide or thiazide-like diuretics like chlorothalidone and indepamide. These are most popular in case of normal hypertensive patients who are having normal kidney function and no heart failure, no lip cirrhosis of liver and no nephrotic syndrome. Number two is loop diabetics. We all have heard the name of Lasix. Lasix is frusemide. The name is such because its action lasts for six hours, Lasix. Another is torsemide. It is slightly longer acting. It is also a loop diuretic. There are two other classes uh, of loop diuretic. One is bumotanide and one is ethacrylic acid, but these are not used. So Lasix, that is frusemide and torsemide. These two are used most frequently, loop diuretics. Now, what are the indications of use of loop diuretics? The indications are the edematous patients who are having renal dysfunction, shortness of breath, and heart failure patients, cirrhosis of liver patients, and nephrotic syndrome patients. That means patients who are having advanced renal failure, heart failure, cirrhosis, and nephrotic syndrome who are bloated up. And thiazide diuretic is used mostly in case of normal hypertensive patients who are not bloated up, not swollen up. There are two other types of diuretics. One is aldosterone antagonist like spironolactone, available in the name of aldactone and epiletinol. These are used in two indications. One is resistant hypertension as a fourth drug and number two in case of heart failure in order to prevent cardiac fibrosis. This is also a life-saving drug. There is another fourth class of diuretic called acetazolamide. This is a rarely used diuretic used in glaucoma and acute mountain sickness. Suppose you are moving to Ladakh, you have to take acetazolamide, otherwise you will feel sick. Now there are certain side effects of diuretics. We are giving diuretics to treat edema and hypertension, but diuretic is not free of side effect. Most of the diuretics cause sodium loss. People may get admitted due to hyponatremia, that is low sodium level. Loop diuretics cause less incidence of sodium loss than thiazide diuretics. Thiazide diuretics, especially in elderly person, causes more sodium loss. Thiazide and loop diuretics both cause loss of potassium, known as hypokalemia. But spironolactone causes increased potassium, that is hyperkalemia. We must remember this spironolactone causes hyperkalemia, that is raised potassium, because when we are giving with other drugs like ACEARB, hypertensive drugs, this may cause severely raised potassium. So we must remember the drug interactions while using diuretics with other drugs. Diuretics have certain other side effects like 
ototoxicity, especially common with loop diuretics like flusemide and torsemide. It may cause hyperuricemia, that is raised uric acid level. Thiazide may cause hypercalcemia, that is raised calcium levels, and loop diuretics may cause hypocalcemia, that is lower calcium levels. This may also cause raised blood sugar level and raised lipid levels, but these are non-significant effects. Now, coming to loop diuretics, which are mostly used in case of edema, and these are life-saving. If the patient comes with frank heart failure with shortness of breath, if we give either injection torsemide or flusemide, patient is safe. This is a life-saving drug. What is the difference between flusemide and torsemide? Flusemide's action is short-acting and oral bioavailability is only 50% of intravenous bioavailability and action is slightly unpredictable how long it will last. But torsemide is long-acting, oral bioavailability is almost as good as intravenous bioavailability, it can, we can give it once a day. And the dose of loop diuretics also varies according to the renal dysfunction. Suppose a per person who is having normal function, he may respond to only 5 mg of torsemide and 20 mg of Lasix. But a person who is having advanced renal failure may require 100 to 200 mg of Lasix or torsemide. So, dose varies according to the renal dysfunction. So, in summary, renal failure can be acute and chronic. If the patient is normal hypertensive, we give thiazide diuretic. These are most popular drugs. If the patient is bloated up, edematous, having shortness of breath, we give loop diuretics. Loop diuretics are Lasix or flusemide and torsemide. Torsemide is slightly better in terms of action, long acting and more bioavailable. In order to judiciously use diuretics, we must know its side effects and also we must know the interaction with other drugs so that we can save a person's life. Thank you.